Hello everybody, welcome back to another tutorial. Today is going to be the Valentine's Day one that I have been promising you guys. And as you saw by the title and the picture um, when this video started, we are going to be making a ponytail bow. Uh, this is a really simple bow. One, I know it looks complicated, but I promise you it is actually really simple. And the only template you are going to need is the four inch pinwheel template. I will link down below on where you can get that printed out. Um, and as I've explained before, I just back mine on some cardboard and fill it with packing tape. It's a really quick, cheap, easy way to make your own templates. But that's the only template you were going to need. Um, and this one is kind of an unconventional Valentine's Day bow because it's not the typical red, pink. It is yellow. I had this gorgeous yellow with rainbow hollow foil hearts all over it and I thought why not make an unconventional Valentine's Day bow so that's what we're going to do to make the topper portion of it where it's the uh, loopy bits you're going to need two pieces of 26 inch long 7 eighths inch ribbon um, you actually don't need two if you only want to do one side and you don't mind the plain color, but I want to showcase some of this really pretty rainbow ombre that's actually double sided and I will link down below on where to get this. Um, I'm actually planning on doing a review of this shortly, so um, keep your eye out for that. Before we go any further, if you have not subscribed already, please click the subscribe button somewhere around here. Right next to it will be a bell set. That's to set your notifications. Please set them to all so you do not miss any time I upload a new video. So you are going to need ribbon. You're going to need needle and thread, scissors, lighter, the clip of your choice. For this one, I am just going to be using a double prong clip that I will line. You're going to need the template I mentioned. You will also need a hot glue gun to attach everything. Mine is off camera. To get started with the topper, you are going to take the two pieces, fold them in half, but do not, well, you probably crease, but I'm going to say don't crease. And you want to find the middle. And you can lightly crease, you just don't want a deep crease in there. It'll screw with the folding later on, I found. So just a light crease so you can find the middle later. Alternatively, you can also take a straight pen. I had to chase one down on this container. Um, you can take a straight pen and put it in the middle like that so you can find it later. You're going to take the ribbon and lay it out. Whatever is going to be on the inside is the side that's going to be up. And you are going to fold it like you would larger ribbon for a cheer bow. If you find that your ends are shifting, you can come back through and just grab some clips. The tutorial I watched on this, they um, glued both the ribbons together. I just find it makes it stiffer when you go to do this. You want to keep your ends straight. So make sure they are even. And 
you're going to bring that center just like you would a cheer bow. And do that shape. So again, you're going to keep your end straight. Bring that center down, tuck it in like that. At this point, you can pick it up. Make sure to hold it so nothing budges. I have made my loops way too big, so let's try that again. Um, <laughs> let's bring the tails closer together. This is where one of these um, mats that has rulers and markings really comes in handy for bow making. I still think it looks a little big, but let's fiddle with the loops. You always want to make sure that your ends are even. So no matter what you do to the loops up here, your ends have to stay even. All right, I think I like that I think I like the length of the um, tails so I'm going to take my straight pin out bring my needle and thread I just put the needle once through the center you don't need to sew it up my needle and thread is stuck you need a second as you know, it is never a tutorial on this channel unless my needle and thread get stuck somewhere at least once. All right. <laughs> I lost a clip, but that's fine. I don't need it anymore. So I'll bring the needle straight through. And you were going to wrap it around the center like that. And at this point, you're going to lay it down flat and pull the thread to cinch it. And then I just wrap it around a couple more times that I'm really happy I have a nice tightly wrapped center I was just playing with my loops there don't mind me and then bring the needle to the back and tie it off like so and make sure the knot is well knotted and then cut off excess thread and if your ends shift ever so slightly to where they're not completely even anymore you can come back and just trim them up I'm not going to heat seal this yet because I will be trimming the ends in a little bit. So I'm just going to trim up the ends, ensure they are even. Yep, 
Yep, they look even. I am going to put this aside for now. Push all my clippings off to the side. Let me quick re-knot my needle and thread. Um, for the streamer portion of it, the tutorial I watched used ribbon to make the streamers. I, however, decided to opt for corkers. As you can see here, um, I have a video on a corker bow that I believe I showed you how to um, bake these, but if not, I will link a video below to show you how to bake the corkers. I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, eleven. I have about 10 or 11 pieces in here. And then I just knotted, you know, I tied them together so that they are ready to go and they will hang with that. We are going to make the base bow. I have a video uh, that I show you how to make the pinwheels. I will link that below. I'm going to do it off camera and then I will be back. One hour later. All right, I am back. I took the opportunity not only to do the pinwheel base bow, but I have the spikes completed and I line the clip. So we are ready to put this all together. I will link videos below on how to do the spikes and the pinwheel. Uh, if you remember, we have the corkers for the streamers and we have the um, topper bow that we've made. going to take this and start putting it together. The orange one is a little bit shorter, which is why I have to make sure that is up front. So we're going to attach the streamers to the spikes. And what I'm just going to do is take my thread And as always, I use um, Coates and Clark upholstery thread. You can really yank on this stuff and not worry about snapping it like you would regular thread. I can't tell you how many times I have snapped thread with normal all-purpose thread. This is why I use the upholstery thread. Sorry, I was stuck. So you want to just wrap around a couple of times. Make sure that it is good and secure. Just like that. I'm going to wrap one more time off camera. It's a little hard to be wrapping on camera because I'm trying to show you guys what I'm doing and not block the camera, which I apparently keep doing anyway, so. All right. And then I'm going to that off the thread. Don't worry if your wraps, you're a little uneven because that's just gonna get covered up. Nobody's going to see that. You want to make sure your spikes are still even. Give a tug on them if you need to. And 
and make sure that this is hanging just below the center because what you're going to do is now you're going to be taking that topper that we made and you are going to be just putting a little dot of glue right there it on this is what you have so far it's gonna be a really cute bow once we're done all right at this stage before I attach it to the base bow what I like to do is take the clip of choice in this case is just a double prong clip that has been partially lined. I attach it to the bottom of the base bow. Make sure to press down so that it is firmly attached. And then I grab the ribbon I'm going to wrap the center with find it for a second. I thought I put it off to my left and it wasn't. And I just stick it inside the clip, but not obviously not wrap it around. But this just preps it. It's easier to do when it's just a single layer pinwheel, in my opinion. I urge you guys to try it. And we're going to put a dab of glue right there. Come back to our bow. And just... Oh, it slid. Going to attach it just like that. To bring that piece of ribbon that we're going to wrap the center with through the center of all of this and it didn't attach for whatever reason give me a second a little bit more glue this happens from time to time I know I've said before that I leave mistakes like this in so you guys can see that bow making isn't perfect there are a lot of mistakes fairly confident it is pretty well adhered. And like I said, you're going to bring that center wrap ribbon up through the center. It's a lot of parting to try to find the center. around the top, but back through the center of the top and pull tight so that you know everything is firmly secure. Little dot of glue right there in the center. Pull tight and close the clip. Now comes time to come back through and make adjustments as needed before you go and stiffen this bow. Because once you stiffen it, you're not going to be able to make the adjustments because they're permanent. For 
some reason here, as you can see, let me clip the end really quick. Just flipping this all over the place to try to keep it out of the way. As you can see, my spikes, for whatever reason, got crooked here. So it's just a matter of pulling it up to get them even again. At this point in the bow is when I will glue the spikes, the final pieces together in the center so that we have that perfect fan all the way around. Come back up here, give one final tug. Make sure everything is nice and flat. And then glue the spikes closed. Once you are happy with it being even and flat, I just usually give a push down in the center just to make sure everything is nice and secure. Pull your corkers to the center. And if you have any corkers that have ends like that that you just want to trim off. I missed this when I was trimming earlier. Just trim and heat seal. Now you can leave it just like this and heat seal your um, topper ends or you can do like I'm going to do and do a simple slant cut. that. For some reason it didn't cut perfectly straight. I think I'm going to have to sharpen my scissors. All right. And then you're going to heat seal the ends. And you're going to come here to the other side and slant cut in reverse. So you want the slant going in the opposite direction. And then do your heat sealing. Just like that. And at this point, I will say put this, go take this and do your heat sealing, not your heat sealing, your stiffening so that you keep the nice loop and all of the um, perkiness of the corkers. So I'm going to take this and go stiffen it. And um, at this point, you can just embellish it however you see fit bottle caps, whatnot, um, you will see my finished embellishing when I'm done at the end. I will include that at the end. But thank you guys for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I hope this was a fun new bow for you to try. Um, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. If you have any questions or comments or video requests, please leave them in the comment section below. Feel free to like and share this video. Um, also, I am going to leave a link down in the bottom for my Instagram. Please check those out. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye.